Hi, welcome back to Brian Sims. Today I'd like to talk about my experience drafting jeans with the Wild Ginger software. Um, as you remember, I was drafting shirts a while back, and I was able to successfully figure that out after many, many, many Muslims. Um, and then I switched to, switched to doing jeans. Jeans was the next thing I wanted to be able to successfully do with the software. The pattern the software was giving me, based on the, the measurements I'd put in, was very strange, and which is why I started with shirts, because that, that pattern at least looked right. The jeans pattern does, did not look right at all. Um, the crotch curves were just completely bizarre, which has to do with one of the measurements I'd put in, and it took me probably 15 tries and muslins to figure out how to manipulate the software with putting in different, different numbers to get a pattern that was at least decent. Um, what I did was, it, the, I'm wearing the pair, I'm wearing the, the first successful pair that came out of the software. Um, to make the muslins, what I ended up doing was just making a bunch of very short cut off, you know, with no pockets, no buttons, you know, just very small, but you have to, you, uh, muslins basically, using denim, um, you can get denim fairly cheap. I mean, two fifty a yard if you get it on sale. So it's not like denim was expensive. I'm making very small uh, little shorts just to. I mean, the fit of jeans really, generally speaking, it's all about this area here. The legs most most of the time are just straight tubes. So the fit on the legs is not as, as essential as the fit in the seat in the crotch area. Um, so after I was able to make this successful pair, which are just perfectly fine jeans. They look great, they fit, they're comfortable. Um, they fit so well that I didn't even put belt loops on. They don't fall down. They're just fine, they're great jeans. I've, I've washed and worn these quite a few times now. Um, so, and this was the first pair of like full jeans I'd made, oh God, in maybe a year. So it took me, this, this pair of jeans took quite a while to sew up. Um, the thing I wanted to change about the next pair was I wanted to, every jeans pattern I've ever seen, you know, commercial pattern made for home sewers, has the legs tapering down, not equally, but they taper down from the hip and the, the crotch seam down to the ankle, if they're tapered jeans. If they're straight leg, obviously they go straight down. But they always taper down. And in most commercial ready-to-wear jeans I've seen, and ones that I've made copies of, the outside leg seam is always straight down. It just goes straight down from, from the waistband, straight down to the ankle. And all the shaping is done on the inside leg seam. And I feel like that was something I wanted to try. It, it, and I, I don't know, I most likely commercial ready-to-wear jean manufacturers do this because it saves them time or fabric. And, and I actually discovered that, it's probably, that that is probably the case. Um, my, my secondary theory of that is that when you have the leg shaping on the inside, it tends to carve out more fabric here, which tends to give you what might appear to be more of a straight leg, as opposed to when it tapers in, you can end up with a slight knock kneed appearance from those types of jeans. I don't know whether that's good or bad or just whatever. Most, I've noticed that most designer jeans you see even, and some are, are very pronounced and give people a slight bow-legged shape, which maybe we find that more attractive, I don't, I'm not sure. Either way, I wanted a straight outside leg seam. The other reason I wanted to do this is because I, last time I was in New York, I picked up some selvage denim. And this is denim that's being woven in, supposedly, you know, I got it for a very good price, so we'll just, you know, we'll see. But uh, this is denim that's being woven on uh, Japanese looms, they're not Japanese, but it's just they, they, it's supposedly woven in Japan on a small loom. It's only about 30 inches wide. Um, and if you look up selvage denim, you'll see that basically what they do when they when they cut jeans from this denim, because it is so narrow, is they'll actually incorporate the selvage in the outside leg seam. And now, in, in order to do that type of thing, you would have to have a perfectly straight, because the selvage is perfectly straight, you'd have to have a perfectly straight outside leg seam. Um, regardless. So that was the other reason why I wanted to make a straight outlet side leg seam is because I have some of the selvage denim that I would like to use to make selvage jeans. Um, there's a whole a whole 
following for this denim, thinking that it's it's somehow better. I, I look, the denim is, the denim is denim. It looks just like all the rest of the denim I have. Um, so I'd like to show you some of the other attempts that I've made at making, some of my attempts that I made at making a straight legged, straight outside leg seam. Um, the Wild Ginger software does not do this automatically. What you have to do in order to make that work is you have to use the pattern editor feature of the software, which I've come to discover is basically what you're buying, I think, when you buy the Wild Ginger software. Uh, the pattern editor is, is basically just a CAD program. It's movie, it's a, it allows you to move the lines and, and take measurements of different sections and put place curves, and it just it allows you to take a standard pattern and edit it the way you'd like it. Um, the limitations of the of the of what maybe we'll call it AutoCAD part, where where it basically just generates the drawing based on your measurements, is fairly limited. You're getting a very limited amount of adjustment. You can only do so much by changing the numbers. Eventually, if you want to really get into there and start tweaking your pattern, you really have to use a pattern editor. And that was it took me a long time to accept that that's what I was going to have to do. So I'm going to try on the next pair of jeans. I'll be right back. Okay. So this is the first attempt I made at, all I did was move the side seam straight and then adjust for that movement by moving the inner leg seam out in a curved shape. So just like this for the inner leg seam and made the side seam straight. These jeans turned out really, really, really skinny. They're wearable, no problem with, with the wearability, and especially after a few, you know, after a few hours. They're just fine. They're very, very tight in the calf. Um, I don't use stretch denim, so there's no extra give in these really. <clears throat> I they were a little they're a little loose around the waist, and I was confused as to why that had happened. This whole area here just seems a little it, it they, they they were just washed, so they're smaller now than if I've worn them all day. But by the end of the day, I feel like I've got very skinny legs, and this whole area here has is it doesn't fall down because the legs are so skinny, but it's just like, I feel like I'm just floating in this, I feel like I'm floating in the top of my jeans a little bit. Um, you know, these are also jeans where you sit down and the, the back comes down quite a bit. So, um, yeah, these were fine. They're just, the, you know, I, I, it's, it's, I, the skinny jean look is, is great, it's just not something I want to wear every day. So let me show you the next, the next uh, attempt. Okay, on this pair of jeans, <coughs> I have widened the legs, which I'm not sure if you can actually see that or not, and I adjusted, I thought I adjusted, oh, what, what had happened on, I remember now, what had happened on the first pair that I had just showed you, is I didn't take, I didn't adjust the yoke, I left the yoke the same, I just straightened the side seams, left the yoke the same, so the side seam came up and then kind of slightly angled out for the old style yoke which obviously makes the jeans bigger at the top. So I adjusted the yoke on this pair, and then what I have on this pair is there's just too much fabric in this crotch area. It's not, un obviously it's not uncomfortable, but it's not, you know, if you stand with your legs together, like you shouldn't have all this extra fabric here. It's the same thing, that the it's the same thing happening in the seat. There's more fabric right here than, than I'd like there to be. They're great for standing with your legs apart, you get lots of movement that way, like there's no pulling at all of the fabric, but I figured out what I had done is, when I straightened the side seams out, I only accounted for that movement in the inside leg seam. What happened was, <clears throat> by taking that seam and moving it out, I moved it out, it added about an inch of extra fabric on each side. Well obviously when you're wearing the jeans, that fabric's not gonna stick out of the sides here, the sides are going to hug into your body, that fabric is then going to, there's nowhere for it to go, and so it's going to end up bunching into the middle. And that's what happened on this pair. So quite wearable, no problem with the, the comfort. They stay up, I did put belt loops on them, but they do stay up. So let me show you the next pair that I think I got almost 100% right. This is the next and hopefully the last pair that I will have to make with this pattern. Um, I adjusted, so what I did on this pair is basically I measured how much I moved the side seam out at the hips, took that amount out from, what, what had happened was is the crotch ended up being too extended on these. If you fold these in half, 
this part right here ended up coming out too far based on how, how wide this was. So what I did on this pair is I basically moved this seam in, shortening this crotch length, and it made all the difference. Like these jeans, they fit well in the, in the back. They're comfortable, they don't, they don't, they don't fall down when you sit. Um, the legs don't have to, you know, the legs don't move all the way up to your knees when you sit down. There's not a lot of extra fabric here, but there's enough to provide some comfort, but not, not more than you need. Something else I made is I adjusted the yoke on this pair. I made, in almost all commercial jeans, you'll notice that the center of the yoke here is wider and then it narrows out here in the corners. And I did that same thing on this pair. Um, what I was getting was I was getting a, a kind of peak where the front and the back jeans came together here, which if you put the waistband on that way, it creates a weird buckle and it's just not right. So I ended up, I ended up smoothing that out so this is, now, this is now straight across here. I also, on this pair, because I want them low rise, so they, sh they should kind of come down under the belly in the front, if you end up having it too high on the sides, you comes down and it creates this angle right here, which is kind of, it's not quite right. What you really want is you want the fabric to come down in a curved motion and come across so your closure isn't doing this, it's doing something more like this. And I achieved that on this pair. And they're really, I'm am amazingly happy with, with how these turned out. There are some things I'd like to adjust with the next pair. I think the legs are still a little tiny bit too skinny, um, but that's you know easy to accomplish. But um, very super happy with these. So also I don't know if you you probably noticed that I've been experimenting with using some of the embroidery on some jeans. I've been just having fun with that. Um, and I'll probably talk about that more later. So, for now, I'm happy. I figured out how to use the pattern editor in Wild Ginger. I now have a pair of jeans that I feel like fits me like a glove. They're not too tight anywhere. They're not binding. I feel like they're going to be comfortable throughout the day. I'm pretty happy with that. So, thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great week. Bye.